advice. Same way she didn't want to touch any of his money, I guess. Why not? Did she tell you why she didn't borrow the money from home? No, but it was obvious how upset the doc would be if he discovered it. You know, Wayne and Lester hated each other's insides. I'm afraid everyone knows about that. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> Mr. Rowland, are you always in the habit of lending such large sums of money on a moment's notice? Well, I owed it to Janice. You know, she swung a pretty big contract to my company for the new clinic. Is that the only reason you were so willing to help? Of course it was. Except that I've known Janice all my life, naturally. Apparently, you'd also known Leslie Hall for some time. Had you ever had trouble with him? No, Mr. Mason. I've always been friends with just about everybody, I guess. And now, uh, tell us, Doctor, how many stab wounds were there in the body? Just the one. In your opinion, Doctor, would a person striking such an unerring blow have to have an expert knowledge of anatomy? In my opinion, yes. Uh, what type of training would you consider most likely to give a person this knowledge? That of physician or surgeon. Thank you. Cross examine. Doctor, in your years at the coroner's office, you've been assigned to countless homicides, I suppose. Oh, yes. Many of them stabbings? Knives are pretty convenient. Looking back over all those stabbings, do you recall any in which the fatal wound was the same as in this instance? Why, yes, about five years ago. Was that case ever solved? Indeed. Can you tell this court the occupation of the person convicted of that murder? Bookkeeper. Bookkeeper. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. I told you I can't identify it. But you agree this scalpel is of the same rare Swedish make as other instruments which belong to Dr. Reddy? Yes, I told you that. And you already admitted that a knife of this particular size was missing from those instruments? Yes, it was, but... Miss York, where are such instruments generally kept? In a locked cabinet in the office. But it's left open during the day and any patient could easily have stolen it. Now, Miss York, you've been instructed to answer yes or no. Isn't it true the doctor always placed a bag in his car at night for emergencies? So couldn't this weapon have been quite handy, in other words, on the fatal night when he went angrily calling on the deceased? Yes, sir. My name's Asa Cooperman. And where do you live, Mr. Cooperman? 306 Maple Road. That's just across the back lot from Doc Henry's office. Now, will you tell the court in your own words... Excuse me. Now, Mr. Cooperman, will you tell us what you saw the night of the murder? Well, I saw a man out back of Dr. Emily's place. I, I can't swear it was the doc himself, but it was about his size. And, uh... Well, he moved quick, like the doctors. Of what time was this, Mr. Schultzman? Oh, it was about midnight. I, I'd been out smoking for a couple of hours while my wife was watching television. I wouldn't have noticed ordinarily, uh, because most of the time there was a woman out there. Uh, Miss York, uh, the doc's uh, nurse. She tidied up pretty late sometimes. What was it that caught your eye? What did you see this man doing? Well, he was burning something, I guess. Anyway, I, I heard the doc's incinerator go plain. Then I saw him hurrying off in the dock. This uh, partially burned towel, Exhibit 5, was removed from the incinerator the following morning in my presence. We found the scalpel wrapped inside. Uh, were you able to make any sort of analysis of the blood stain, Sergeant? We were. Traces of dried blood on both scalpel and towel were of type B. And what was the murder victim's blood type? The same. B. Were any other laboratory tests made? Yes. Uh, a couple of small hairs adhered to the blood. They were of identical type and similar color to the hair of the victim. What about this, uh, this mark here? Mm, it's an ownership mark, the Palm View Laundry. They've been supplying Dr. Evans' office for some time. I think that's all. Thank you. 
QT-like, and if there was any hitch, I should call him. And then when this lady phoned me at my hotel and said she'd have the money delivered, well, I, I called Mr. Hall. And put the bite on him, too? Well, sure. So easy. It would have been silly not to. Anyway, I grabbed a cab, and I went right over, and Hall had the money ready and waiting. When were you paid? Well, about a quarter to ten that night. Did you go inside the department? Oh, oh, no, sir. No, you're not going to hang that on. No, I, I didn't touch him. I didn't even go near him. I was back at the hotel by 10 o'clock. At which time, Roland paid you and left the hotel. Then what happened? Well, I packed my bag and sat around waiting for a bus out of town. Mr. Woodlock, it was so easy to get two payoffs. Why not a third? Third? You wouldn't have left town without trying to get at least a few dollars from Dr. Edley now, would you? Didn't you go to Dr. Edley's office about midnight? And prowl around a bit looking for him? Now, see here, if you mean was I the guy that man saw back, how could I be? I heard him. He said the man he saw moved around spry and quick like the doctor there. Sure didn't say anything about crutches. I'm sure you don't need crutches, Mr. Woodlock. Oh, I know you have an old fracture. But these crutches are really just window dressing, are they not? Get a hold of a man's pants leg, you don't let go. All right, I'm a fraud. Was that man by the incinerator you, Mr. Woodlock? Yes, of course. And there was nobody in around front, so I went out back. I smelled cloth burning, I looked in the incinerator, and then I left. That's all there was to it. Your Honor, I'd like to recall a witness. 
No, I wasn't there. I swear I left the office before 8 o'clock. I went to a movie that evening. When someone must have put that towel and knife into the incinerator, Miss York, between the time of the murder and the time Mr. Whitlock arrived, I shall ask the reporter to read back what was said by your neighbor. Please. I know Mr. Cooperman testified that he only saw the one person, the one man. And you recall Mr. Cooperman was outside smoking during all the time in question, the two or three hours before midnight. But that doesn't mean he'd noticed everything. Well, that's right. He said he might not have noticed a woman at the incinerator. He was so used to seeing you there, he said. No, it wasn't I. Do you happen to have any idea as to just how rich Dr. Gates was? What? Well, I, I guess everybody in town knew that he was at least a millionaire. So the gift of $100,000 would scarcely have used up his fortune. There still would have been a great deal left. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to answer any more questions. I didn't even know Dr. Gates, and I didn't kill him. And I didn't kill Leslie Hall. I'm not the woman. No, I'm sure. If any woman used the incinerator that night, it was the woman who was trying desperately to lay certain blame on Dr. Edley. The woman who had access to the Gates farmhouse, who also set up false evidence there. The woman who must have killed Dr. Gates, and then having been blackmailed by one certain person for the past year, found she had to kill him too. The blackmailer, Leslie Hall. The woman? Me! <laughs> He was going away without me. Yes, I did. I went down to see him in the laboratory. And it was late night. And he was already packed. And then after that, Leslie kept on asking questions. Dr. Gates always did say Leslie Hall has a very shrewd mind. My Dr. Gates said that. My Dr. Gates. <laughs> An official message from Medicare. Often things look the same. Exactly the same. Until you take a closer look. At Medicare.gov, you can easily compare Medicare plans and see the real difference. Find a plan that offers you more or saves money. Wouldn't that be nice? Plans change every year. So can your health. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Compare now at Medicare.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. This is exactly why we chose Weed Filter. Before the Weed Filter, our gutters would get so clogged. They used to have to climb up on that roof. Weed Filter was a lifesaver. The Weed Filter installation process was so simple and easy. When the sales can gave us interest-free financing and the price was right, it was a no-brainer. Our downspouts flow freely now. My home is better 